Update. During Thanksgiving, I, 25 male, realized that three years ago I had slept with my girlfriend's married cousin, 29 female. Now I need to know who to talk to first. Original post. I met my girlfriend Jessie, 25 female, three years ago while we were both in college. I had just gotten out of rehab for a very serious addiction. She helped me stay clear of any substances and has been the reason why I am alive today. I truly feel that I owe her my life. This year we spent Thanksgiving at her grandparents' house along with her family. When we arrived, I met some of her cousins and who once seemed familiar. This was Samantha, who I thought I knew from around campus when she attended the same college as Jessie and I. She had moved out of state five years ago to live with her husband and was back for Thanksgiving now with her two kids. After the dinner, all of the younger cousins went outside to talk. It was myself, Jessie, Sam, her husband Ricky, and two more of their cousins. We all started to talk about music and the theme of music festivals came up. I talked about a music festival that I have been attending for the past six years. Sam and Ricky also went to that festival four years ago, and Sam went with her friends the next year. It wasn't until they showed me pictures of when Sam went that I remembered where I knew her from. During the year that Sam went with her friends, I happened to run into her with some friends. I had shoulder-length hair, was pale, and probably weighed 150 pounds while being 6 foot 2. I now have short hair, tanner skin, with tattoos and with about 50 pounds of muscle. I am unrecognizable now. A lot of my memories from those years are pretty bad, but what I do remember is that when we met up with her group of friends, we all got really friendly. It was three girls and four of us. We had rented a suite for the weekend and decided to invite the girls over. Due to a mixture of coke, alcohol and MDMA, I can't remember who had slept with who, but I think that I might have hooked up with Sam and another one of my friends joined us or I joined him. All I know is that myself and another guy did it with Sam one night and my friends did it with her the next night. The worst part is that during those days I never wore protection and I am sure that neither did my friend. I don't know if we finished inside her or not, but the possibility exists. Sam and her husband have been married for five years and have a two-year-old and a newborn. I am definitely going to inform Ricky about what happened, but my only concern is what will happen with Jessie. I can't bear the possibility of losing her. She has been what has kept me sober throughout all these years. She has been the angel on my shoulder that has kept me out of trouble. Sam still has the same tattoo on her shoulder, so I am 100% sure that it was her. In one of her pictures from the festival, I am in the background with my back to the camera talking to my friends. I pretty much have no evidence to support my claims, and if I confront Sam alone, she will just deny it. I am sure she doesn't even recognize me. What do I do? Who do I talk to? Should I even bother? Now for the top advice before reading the update. I would talk to your girlfriend before anyone else. Yes, I'll talk to her today and ask what she wants to do. Stay out of it. This isn't your confession. It's Samantha's. If I'm reading the dates right, you didn't do anything you need to apologize to your girlfriend about. And you're possibly going to wreck the lives of three people if you blab. I would probably feel like trash if I just stayed quiet. Wouldn't you want to know if your wife hooked up with two random guys and let them finish inside her while you thought she was out with her friends? She put her husband at risk of any STDs. Thankfully, I'm clean and had already finished before my friend went in, but I don't know if he was clean. I admit that I hate the stay out of it comments whenever I see them. Telling someone is the right thing to do. Honestly, while I'm normally one for calling out cheaters, this could ruin your own life. Heck, the older kid could even be yours. And given the time that has passed, I would be tempted to let sleeping dogs lie. That said, the right thing to do is to come completely clean to your girlfriend and discuss with her the best course of action. I'd probably downplay the MFM part and just confirm you had slept with Sam. I have dark brown eyes and hair, and my friend was black. The kid is super blonde, with a green eye like her dad. This is kind of hard to say what to do. You really have no idea what kind of relationship they have. Some couples enjoy this kind of thing. Clearly it isn't your cup of tea. I'd mind your own business on this one. If it's their cup of tea, then her husband won't mind being told. If it isn't, then he should eventually be glad to know the truth. The kind of people that tend to advise mind your own business are typically the kind that are apprehensive of the outcome for the wrong reasons, fear slash selfishness. And now for the update. Although I only got a few responses, I was surprised at the fact that 50% of the commenters said to just keep it a secret. 
Personally, I kind of have morals, so I decided that I was going to tell Jesse, then tell Rick. He had someone say that the times aligned with the chance that the oldest child could be mine, since my friend and I didn't use protection when we did it with the Sam. But genetically, the baby doesn't look like me, and my friend is black. During early December, I got in contact with said friend and explained his situation. He asked him about that night. He wasn't able to remember much, but does remember that we didn't use rubbers with Sam and that we both finished inside her. I was still thinking on how to approach Jesse about this, when later that night Joe called me back telling me that he had some pictures from the festival weekend. There were two pictures where you could see both Sam and I. One was me in the sweet bathroom wiping blood from my nose, and Sam was behind standing near me. The second picture was Sam sitting on the lap of the third guy she slept with on the second day. There were a few more pictures of Sam and her friends. I got everything I had and called Jessie over the next day. I sat her down and told her everything as best as I could remember. She was devastated when I showed her the pictures. She was angry at me, but decided that she just needed some time to think. I gave her some time and explained to her that I wanted to be honest as possible with her. I told her that I am forever thankful for her help during my rehab and recovery that I wanted to tell her about this because I see a future with her, and I could not hide something like this from her. I couldn't risk it coming out in the open later when we are more committed. I informed her that I was planning on telling Rick, but she was adamant about keeping that a secret. I asked her that if she was in his shoes, how would she feel? She agreed, but said to give her some space to think. We didn't talk much for a week, and on Christmas we met up with her family. Sam and Rick attended Christmas with Rick's family, so they could not attend. Sam and Rick came back for New Year's and that is when I decided to confront them. Jessie and I had a long talk about how I would do this. She wanted to do it anonymously, but I told her that it wouldn't work. I told her that I would invite Rick to a bar on Sunday to watch some football. That Sunday, Rick and I went to the bar, and I waited until the end of the game to talk about it. I asked him if we could go to my apartment to talk about something serious. He had a weird look in his face, but agreed. When we arrived at my place, I told him about my past. I then told him everything about the encounter I had with the Sam. I showed him the pictures and gave him all of the information I had. Rick's face went pale when I told him that both my friend and I finished inside her. I could see his hands shaking. He asked how many other people did she sleep with, and I told him that as far as I knew there were only myself and the other two. I asked him if she was on birth control at the time, because if not, there might be a possibility that she might have gotten pregnant that week. He couldn't remember if she was at a time, but a few weeks later she was pregnant. That is when he said he had enough and just got up and left. Five minutes later, he texted me asking for the pictures. I sent them to him and told him that out of respect I had to tell him, and that he needed to know about the health risk that Sam had put him in. Now, Sam and the kids were staying at Jesse's apartment. Jesse told me that when Rick arrived, he just told Sam to pack their things and that they were leaving. Sam didn't want to leave, It asked why he was angry. But Rick just said they would talk when they got home. Sam was not having any of it and demanded to know why. They began to argue and Jesse took the kids into their bedroom. A couple minutes later, Sam and Rick came into Jesse's bedroom for the kids and they told her that they were leaving. Sam was crying and Rick was very upset. Jesse asked what was happening. Rick told Sam to put their stuff in the car while he explained. Rick went over the whole situation and Jesse corroborated the story he had told her. A few days later, Rick called me to talk about everything. He had been in a rut and moved into an apartment while he set up an appointment with a lawyer. After getting home from the trip, Rick grilled into Sam about everything that happened. She started to confess, but only little by little. She had apparently had another affair a year ago while on a trip with some friends. Rick had sent for a paternity test for his oldest kid, but after a few days, he sent another for his youngest. A week ago, he posted on Facebook that he and Sam were getting a divorce and that he is not the father of the youngest kid. Jesse's grandma really dislikes me now for ruining Sam's marriage, since she's old school Catholic and doesn't believe in divorce. Jesse and I have been working on ourselves and have been going to couples counseling to deal with us. It has been a bit rough over the past two months, but I feel good about my actions and I hope Jesse can understand. You did good, man. Real proud of you. Not many would have the guts to do the right thing. And as far as Jesse's grandma is concerned, if she acts up, ask her next time if she believes in vows of fidelity. I think this should be the sub's new response to this kind of blanket religious statement people make about not believing in divorce. I'm religious myself, but there's a limit to everything naturally, and I most certainly wouldn't tell anyone to stay married if they want a divorce, whatever their reason may be. 
I'm just sick of people playing up the religious angle when talking about preserving marriages. While they're all too keen on ignoring the vows exchanged when said marriage was literally just starting. Or how they eagerly jump to overlook the vow about fidelity, respect and so on, while trying to force the innocent party to stay in marriage due to the in sickness and in health, or for better for worse part of the vows. Sam ruined her own marriage. All you did was be honest. Grandma needs a reality check, but also to read her Bible more carefully because adultery is explicitly named as grounds for divorce in there. I will never understand that thought process. Don't blame the person who broke the vow of fidelity. Don't even blame the spouse that is seeking the divorce. I blame the one person in the situation that you could argue has any integrity. If only they were a liar as well, none of this would have happened. He is not the father of the youngest kid. Oh man, that hits like a ton of cheating bricks. I feel for Rick. Sam has ruined a bunch of lives. Yeah, that was what got me the most. The time that I had spent with Rick showed me that he is such a nice guy. He truly didn't deserve any of this. Now for the last story. My wife got violated by a family friend and now Christmas is a mess. I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. My wife is one of three sisters. One of her sisters has some friends who are essentially part of our family. They are at every birthday, holiday, etc. My wife and her sisters have known them for years, and there has never been an issue like this come up. I'll refer to these people as Jane and John. Me, my wife, her sister and husband, and Jane and John were all out one night drinking at a bar several months ago. We all had a decent time, and were packing into the car to head home for the night, but decided we'd continue drinking at Jane's house. Shortly after arriving there, I could tell my wife wasn't feeling well, and I suggested we went home. Once home, I realized it wasn't that she wasn't feeling well, but rather that she was very disturbed and upset by something. It took a while for her to open up to me, but once she did, she proceeded to tell me what had happened earlier. When we all loaded into the car to leave the bar, she had been sitting in the back seat next to John. I was in the front, so I had no idea any of this had happened until she told me. At some point during the ride, John had aggressively slipped his hand under her dress, attempting to feel between her legs. She swatted his hand away, but he persisted, until at some point he gave up. My wife was in utter shock, and froze up when this was happening. Combined with the loud music and various conversations that were going on, none of the four other people in the car had any idea this was going on, including John's wife who was in the front seat next to me. When my wife had relayed the entire story to me, I was furious, hurt, and confused all at the same time. I was mostly hurting for her as this individual was almost like a brother to her, and I just didn't know what I could do to make it better. Of course, I wanted to defend her honor, but we have two young kids, and I cannot go out for vengeance. I have a family to take care of. I just didn't know how to help her other than listen and be there for her. My wife mentioned that she had told her sister and Jane what had happened once we arrived at Jane's house, so at this point, everyone that had been present that night now knew what had happened. The next day, my wife got a call from John who gave some half-baked apology claiming he was drunk and didn't remember doing anything. Then the story changed to he was looking for his seatbelt or something. We instantly cut contact with John and Jane, but here's the crux of the issue. Jane is the best friend of my wife's sister who was present that night, and they were very much have continued their relationship as if nothing had happened. Jane and John are still invited to pretty much every family event, holiday, etc. And with that being the case, my wife is essentially by default excluded now. My wife and me and our kids will not attend anything where John is present. My wife has expressed to her sister how hurtful it is that she continues to have these people around after what has happened. But it's become evident that the sister values her relationship with these people more highly than with her sister. This whole thing opened up again just this past week, when my wife and sister were planning out how we were going to handle the holidays, as this will be the first holiday season since this happened. The plan was that my sister-in-law would have Thanksgiving with her own family and include John and Jane, and several other of their friends, while my wife and I would host her other sister and her family, a mother-in-law and several other family members. Then we came to find out that her sister had invited literally the whole family to her home for Thanksgiving, and not inviting us, obviously knowing that we wouldn't come because John would be there. My wife was furious when this happened, and then decided to tell the rest of her family what happened that night, and why we haven't been around for anything lately. Now that everyone knows, and John and Jane know that everyone knows, crap has hit the fan. My sister-in-law has been on a campaign to discredit and bash my wife, telling everyone that's recently found out that it's a lie, that my wife was asking for it, etc. 
She has said some truly callous and disgusting things about my wife, and even made implications that I was planning on retaliating against John violently. My wife and I have been at a complete and total loss as to why her sister is acting like this. My wife has now blocked her sister and her family, and any holiday plans we had are now screwed. I am so disappointed with my sister-in-law's behavior. I'm not sure what I can do at this point without making the situation worse. This is pretty screwed up, and I'm sure there's ways I could have helped more, but any advice is appreciated. Now for the advice. Oh, John remembers. The fact he called show sees in damage control and tried to blame being drunk, which is not an excuse. It goes to show where their allegiances are when John decided to do that to your wife. Your sister-in-law doesn't hold John accountable for his actions, and decides to say your wife was asking for it? I would be completely disgusted with her. To add to this, the rest of the family has shown their true colors. As hard as it may be for you and your wife especially, it's better that this is out in the open. If what I am interpreting is correct, they are all kinda screwed for enabling John and siding with him over blood family. Is that a family that you want your kids around? You want your wife exposed to that BS? I know that families do a lot of weird, unexplainable things, but this is over the top bad, and something that you both should take as then revealing who they really are, and what is actually important to them. I hope Opie's side of the family isn't this weird in the head. Make your own traditions. Your sister-in-law sounds toxic, and everyone else that supports this kind of behavior is also toxic. Do something to make this year special without them. You can't change them, but you can move on. Organize your own event, and invite the people who still are on your side. If they come or not, it's okay. Take the opportunity to do everything the way you and your wife wanted and be happy. The best revenge against these people are leaving them behind, and when they come asking for help, remind them that they burned that bridge long ago.